everybody! Welcome to the Top 10 Luxury Lifestyle Channel. Are you excited about the renowned Kublai Khan? Because in this video, we'll go over every detail to know about Benedict Wong, from his childhood to his career in Hollywood. Let's talk about Wong's income, net worth, personal life, and more. So what is Benedict Wong's net worth in 2021, and how did he get there? Let's start! Benedict Wong is a British Hong Kong actor who has appeared in films, television shows, and stage plays. Even some of the UK's most talented actors struggle to transition from British television to full-fledged Hollywood action star. As part of the Avengers franchise, Mancunian actor Benedict Wong secured his spot in Hollywood. And that's all thanks to his incredible luck. Even he admits that he couldn't anticipate getting this far and receiving such praise. Early Life Benedict Wong was born in Eccles, England on July 3, 1970. Wong is the son of parents who immigrated to the United Kingdom from Hong Kong via Ireland. After graduating from high school, he went to De La Salle Sixth Form College on West Lane in Salford, and there he studied performing arts at Salford City College for two years. Joanna Lumley helped him in his Hollywood journey. The Doctor Strange star was in Dubai one weekend for the Middle East Film and Comic Con, where he spoke about his early career's lucky breaks. Joanna asked him how a kid from a Hong Kong immigrant family who grew up just down the block landed roles in the world's biggest movie franchise, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the biggest show ever made by a streaming giant, Marco Polo, and leading roles in some of the UK's best indie films, The IT Crowd and Dirty Pretty Things, then went on to become such a global icon. I ended up in a cooperative in Manchester, Wong said humbly. I learned how to speak for myself. I felt fortunate since I had done everything I could just to be in the Manchester theaters. At the green room, I'd sweep the floor, keeping an eye out for the Royal Exchange and the library. Wong acknowledges that his main goal at the time was just to perform in Manchester's Royal Exchange Theater, but things quickly changed. Tim Piggott Smith and Joanna Lumley took him under their wings when he said he was working at the Manchester theaters. They were his mentors, and that's how Wong began his remarkable career in Hollywood. How he got a call for Shang-Chi Benedict Wong has expressed his excitement at being cast in Marvel's Shang-Chi. After appearances in Doctor Strange, Avengers Infinity War, and Avengers, the actor talked to Sci-Fi Wire about reprising his role as Wong for the fourth time. When Shang-Chi was happening, I was so pleased that it was happening, but I was kind of a little crestfallen that I wasn't part of it, he said. Then the call from Marvel Studios came, and I was like, yes! You know, I'm super thrilled to be sat at a table of Asian excellence. It was amazing. I'm a big fan of all those artists. Tony Leung is a massive idol of mine, so it's been constant surprises. That's what the role of Wong gives me. And we're not surprised. Who wouldn't love to be a part of Marvel? Career Wong's debut role was in Kevin Wong's BBC radio drama Kai Mei Sauce, which he wrote in 1993. In the situation comedy Fifteen Stories High, he played Errol Spears with Sean Locke, and in the second season of Look Around You, he played Franklin Fu. Wong portrayed Kublai Khan in the Netflix series Marco Polo in 2014, which was extended for a 10-episode second season on January 7, 2015. Wong reprised his role as Wong in the superhero movie Doctor Strange in 2016 and co-starred in the crossover film Avengers Infinity War, which was one of his major professional breakthroughs. In Avengers Endgame, he again reprised his role. In 2016, he played Sean Lee, a national crime agency agent, in the anthology series Black Mirror episode Hated in the Nation. He then went on to voice Alex Yu in Arcane Studios' game Prey the following year. In 2019, Wong voiced Skekvar, a Skeksis general in the Netflix series The Dark Crystal Age of Resistance. And as a result of all these films, he was able to carve himself a place in the hearts of his admirers, and his Hollywood journey helped his professional progress. He also made enough money from these films to make him a millionaire and enjoys a luxurious life. Achievements He's a well-known actor in the film industry. He is featured on the list of famous persons born on February 20, 1970. He's one of the wealthiest actors in Hollywood, having grown up in England. He is also on the list of the most well-known movie actors. At the age of 49, Benedict Wong is one of the world's most renowned people. 
Wong was nominated for Best Supporting Actor at the British Independent Film Awards in 2003 for his portrayal of Guo Yi in Dirty Pretty Things. For his performance as Zhang Lin in Chimerica, Wong was nominated for a West End Frame Award for Best Dramatic Performance in 2013. Enjoying the video so far? Then make sure to give this video a big thumbs up since a simple click from you can help our channel grow tremendously. Now, let's talk about Benedict Wong's net worth. According to Wikipedia, Forbes, IMDb, and several online publications, Benedict Wong's net worth is projected to be $3 million as of 2021. As a professional movie actor, he's made a lot of money. England is where he was born and nurtured, and he acquired the majority of his money as a professional actor. Six things about Benedict Wong you don't know. Well, now you might be thinking that you actually know everything about this amazing actor, but there are some things which might shock you. So sit back and let's check out some little-known facts about him. He's in his late 40s at this point. Wong has a lot of experience and has seen and done many things at this point in his career, so it's safe to say he's experienced and understands what he's doing on set. He's absolutely someone worth paying attention to because his role is crucial as the support that others rely on in the movies. Wong appears in the movie Gemini Man. He plays one of the main protagonist's best pals, who also happens to be a former Marine and a pilot who can fly whatever he can get his hands on. He also provides terrific comedic relief in this film, serving as a counterweight to Will Smith's solemn role. He appeared in The Dark Crystal Age of Resistance. He voiced the general, the emperor's all-in, go-hard, go-tough second-in-command. But he was always in conflict with the Chamberlain, who eventually got rid of the general after the first season. So Wong won't be returning for season two unless they give him another role to voice. He dislikes being classified as anything. One thing about Hollywood, and pretty much any place else, is that it's all too easy to be branded with a label that may or may not accurately describe who you are. Wong doesn't want to be associated with just one specific kind of person, regardless of how he acts or what he does in his profession. He simply wants to be himself. He's a huge Bruce Lee admirer. He is clearly a fan of Enter the Dragon, which isn't surprising given that many people consider it one of Lee's finest films. Wong has a massive following on social media. This is where the recognition comes in since many people know who he is and will undoubtedly tune in from time to time to see what he's up to and how his career is going. Benedict Wong's Three Life Lessons Now that you know everything about Benedict Wong's net worth and how he achieved glory, these are the lessons a fan can learn from his life. Life will hit you hard. But the essential thing is that you keep pushing forward no matter how hard you're hit. The capacity to persevere in the face of adversity is essential to achieving success in life. Limits. You'll only be able to grow to the boundaries you set for yourself and allow others to set for you. To reach your full potential, you must set aside your limitations. Life purpose. You only have one life in this body, so make the most of it by doing something worthwhile for others. Benedict Wong has been in more places than most people know because of his popularity on television and in films, and he's able to get a lot of experience and assist wherever he can when he's been cast in various parts. Many people will remember him as Wong from Doctor Strange and the Avengers Infinity War and Endgame films, but he's done a lot more than that during his career. In terms of his acting style, Wong is more of a supporting role than a leading man, preferring to play a character that is always present at the appropriate moment and can provide significant assistance to people in need. To put it another way, he's the cranky caretaker type who is there to help out when needed. With that being said, it's time for us to say goodbye, but don't be sad as we'll be back soon with another amazing video. If you like this video, please hit like and share it with your friends. To learn more exclusive facts about your favorite personalities and luxury items, please subscribe to this channel. Until next time!